Welcome, welcome, welcome to the weekly power up in the market update. It's August 28, 2023. And today's conversation is about becoming the giant now. And uh, today, the first a part of this training, I'm going to be talking about stats. I'm going to be giving you guys facts about what's happening in the real estate industry. And after that, I'm going to step into the conversation about becoming the giant. So before I get started up, I'm going to start off with some affirmations like I typically do. So every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day and every way, I'm getting stronger and stronger. Every day and every way, I'm getting smarter and smarter. All I need is within me now. I have perfect health. I sign a new listing today. I open a new escrow today. I was born to win. I will never surrender. I will always keep growing. I was born to be great. Today will be the best day of my life, no matter what. And I really mean no matter what. So the next part is the goals. I want you guys to get clearly focused on your goals. And these are my goals. Serve 21,000 families as an organization to do 10 billion in volume and to grow an organization of 10 thousand agents and i also want you to think about this you got to think about your goals in the morning and in the evening you activate something that's called the reticular activating system in your mind when you read your goals and your brain is like a seeking missile right you're going to be looking for that those goals so how is the market first of all i'm going to go into the local market here in the five counties around me orange county la riverside san Bernardino, and san diego and then i'm going to give you national statistics so First and foremost, look at what happened in LA, Orange County, San Bernardino, Riverside, and San Diego. Uh, total, um, we had about 3.2 billion in production in the last seven days, and we had 2,754 homes closed. Which, um, if you look, if you do the math, that's 67 million dollars in one week that were paid in commission. And I'm just measuring five counties. So I want to encourage you because obviously you guys are watching this from all over the nation you have something that's called the MLS. So I want you to search, look at the actives, look at the pennings, look at the closings, look at the average days in the market, stay tracked, create some content around this stuff and make sure that your community knows what is happening with the industry. And, and the, here it is, 3.2 billion, 2,700 homes. So the question you should be asking yourself is how much of this commission do you want to be coming into your household? Because that's really the decision. And also, let me now move on into the national statistics. But look at the foreclosures. I want to demystify because a lot of people out there are thinking, are the foreclosures back? Are they not coming back? Well, this is the reality of it. Check this out. In 2008, look at how many foreclosures we had. We had 1.3 million foreclosures in the first six months of the year. 2009, we had 1.5 million in 2010, we had 1.7 million. And as you can see, right, over a million from 2008 to 2012. So where are we at now? 186,000 homes in 2023. So do the math. Is this going to be a foreclosure market? Absolutely not. I mean, something would have to be crazy, you know, to unload a million plus properties on the market. So based on the data, based on what I'm looking at, there's no foreclosures that are going to be hitting the market in a massive way. There will literally be a need to be a million plus foreclosures for this for this to impact the marketplace. So also something to note, right? People that are behind their mortgage payments three months or more is also at an all time low. And again, this is per Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So again, this also gives me a great indicator that again, the market is not going to go down. Also, serious delinquencies. Um, again, historically low, right? And this is this data is af, um, as of June. So um, I want you to pay attention to what Bill McBride said, right? This is something he said in 2008. And this is something he just said, you know, uh, one month ago. So in 2008 of November, he said, foreclosure activity is already at record levels, yet as prices fall, foreclosure activity will probably continue to increase and the activity will be literally off the chart. Look what he said in July, though. There will not be a foreclosure crisis this time. So again, this is really important information that you should be giving to your customers because a lot of people are on the fence, right? They're like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm literally giving you the data. Empower yourself and empower consumers. Also, look at what happened here as far as home prices, like the forecast, right? 
Fannie Mae, Morgan Stanley, Zillow, CoreLogic, all of these companies made the original predictions. And look at all of them said that the market was going to fall. But look at their current forecast, right? MBA says it's going to be even. Fannie Mae said we're going to go up 3.9%. Morgan Stanley said we're going to stay even. AEI said we're going to go up 6%. Zillow says we're going to be up 5.5%. And CoreLogic is saying this, that we're going to be up 6.8%. So now, if we look at the mortgage rate projections, right? Again, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Look at the interest rates, right? Like you got Fannie Mae, MBA, NAR, and, and the averages of all three. They're all saying the same thing, right? Interest rates quarter one is going to be 6%. Interest rates quarter two are going to be 5.9. They're going to say, they say it's uh, quarter three is 5.7 and quarter four, we're going to be at 6.27%. So I want you guys to understand how powerful you are as real estate professionals. Talking to homeowners makes a difference. 64.5% of sellers were more inclined to sell after they talked to a professional like yourself. We are the market. We are the industry. We are the advisors. Our customers are looking for us to give them this information. So now that you're equipped, that you're empowered with data, talk to your customers and give them the facts. What's going to happen when the interest rates drop? People are going to be literally on fire buying properties. You're going to have to pay college tuitions to get offers accepted. I mean, it's going to go crazy. Right now, we have the perfect storm, right? There's obviously not a lot of inventory. Interest rates are a little bit higher. Everybody's a little bit skeptical. So there's less competition. And I know everybody talks about this, but you know, buy the home and date the rate, right? When the, when the interest rates come down, then they can refinance and save themselves a ton of money. I really think that we're going to start to see multiple offer situations again, and we're going to start to see the, the market increase crazy. So look at the existing home sales, right? And this is, again, I want you guys to see the data because I've talked about these statistics in the past. Look at how many homes were on the market, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. They were all hovering around 5 million to 5.8 million. And 2021 and 2022, we had a very healthy market. That's why everybody had a client. Everybody was making money. And look at 2023, super low inventory. So this is why the market is, you feel like you're being squeezed right now. There's less homes on the market. So what's that mean? Competition is going to be intense. And guess what? If the interest rates drop, that's going to intensify even more. So this is, again, a prediction of mortgage rates. As you can see, the each quarter they're predicting. Quarter one, 5.7. Quarter two, 5.5. Quarter three, 5.2. Quarter four, 5.9. But you can see the year over year, right? Since 2019 to now, we're right around kind of in this range here from 2022. So next slide that I got coming up for you is, look, look at the inventory all over the nation, month over month. And, the, and as of July, you could see that almost the entire nation, we're going to appreciate, you know, from 0% to 15%, which is all blue. But you could see that there's some orange states, right? There's about four of them that have gone uh, from negative 15% to 0%. But the national average is that we're going to appreciate 5.4%. So really important stat to note there. Also, today's Housing is half, right, of the normal inventory. So that's why, again, you have more competition. The seller's market, right now is the time to sell. Also, also really important in stat, right, unemployment is at an all-time low again, right? This is a very healthy sign. People have jobs, right? People are making money. So again, those people that have jobs, get them into a property. Don't have them rent. Guess what's happened to rent for 11 years in a row? It's gone up make help them to become homeowners. So now another thing is that the hourly earnings rise over 4.4% from last year. So again, more people are making more money, right? Um, that's a very good sign, very healthy way. So I just want you guys to be empowered with this information, but get out there, talk to people. You are the economy. You are the professional. You are the advisor. Stay up to date every single week. So now switching gears. Last week, we talked about the no, the most known wins, right? You cannot be a secret agent in this market, right? So you need to be known, you need to be seen, and you have to be loud, and you have to be a walking, talking billboard. Everywhere that I go, if I'm at a barbershop, 
if I'm at a gas station, if I'm at a restaurant, people know that I'm in real estate. And you know, one of the things that works also have the stickers on your laptop, have a hat, have the logo on your shirt, but let people know that you're in the business. You cannot be a secret agent, especially in this market. People more than ever are looking for professionals. So now I want to go into the conversation that I have this week for you guys. And I want you to awaken the giant within. Let me share with you guys a quick story, right? I've been on this leadership journey here for about six and a half years. And before this, I was full in production. I was doing 100 to 150 transactions on a yearly basis. When I started telling my friends, that I wanted to be a speaker, a coach, a leader. And I had this dream to lead a global organization. Guess what my friends said? Leo, you're crazy. You're great at selling homes. Stick with what you know. You're making a mistake. And my friends, honestly, they had their, they had like my best interest at heart, right? They just wanted to make sure that I was going in the direction where I was going because I was doing extremely well. So I don't blame them. I don't make them wrong. I don't think that they were wrong for telling me what they said, but you got to remember this as you are becoming the greatest version of yourself, people around you, especially the people that are the closest to you will not see who you're becoming. So it's your job, your responsibility to hold that vision to your chest. And it may be time for you to say, you know what? I'm going to become a listing agent. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to now start building a team. I'm going to start building an organization. I am going to structure my business differently, right? There might be something within you right now that you've been withholding, that you've been denying, but I want you to awaken that giant within. And this is another key element, okay? People that I know that have been the greatest of all time, I've been around some amazing entrepreneurs that have, are multi-millionaires and billionaires. Guess what? Their energy, their attitude, their confidence was exactly like it is right now as it was when they just started, all right? So I want you to think about that because a lot of people think they need to get the millions or the billions or they need to get to the destination before they get excited, before they get enthusiastic, before they start doing everything that they need to do. Hey, when I get the money, I'm gonna start doing all this content. I'm gonna start helping all these people, but no, it doesn't work like that. You need to become that version of yourself right now. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. I don't care what you've been through exactly where you are, you have all of the equipment, which is life force, right? You could breathe, you could see, you could hear, you got everything you need to accomplish your dreams and your goals. Now, I'm going to give you guys some tangibles of what you need to do to actually awaken the giant within. So number one, take control of your destiny. You have the power to control your life and create the desired future by taking responsibility for your decisions and actions. You need to take full responsibility. You need to believe in your vision and also make sure that you're confident about it. Don't let anybody's comments or non-comments, or if you do a video, nobody likes it. Look, it doesn't matter. If you're easily swayed, then you're not that serious about who you wanna become. So make a decision. That means the cut off from the old version, burn the boats, and take control of your destiny. Number two, you wanna set clear goals. You wanna make sure that you're 100% clear. Define your goals with clarity and specificity, right? Short-term and long-term goals to give your life direction and purpose. Because again, I talked about this in the beginning, the reticular activating system is going to be the thing that's gonna help you to attract your goals, your vision, your mission, the right people are going to start to show up, the right books, the right mentorship, the right leadership, everything will start to show up and maneuver around you. But you got to pay attention and you got to be clear. And that's why you got to constantly keep looking at your goals. Another one, change your beliefs. This is a big one. Identify the challenges, the uh, uh, identify and challenge limiting beliefs that hold you back. Replace negative thought patterns with empowering beliefs to unleash your true potential, right? Replace the old, old habits, the old beliefs. You got to replace them with new things. So instead of saying, I'm not good enough, 
you say, I, I am good enough. I am strong enough. I am smart enough. I am resilient. I am enthusiastic. I am excited. The right start to replace them, utilizing affirmations, reading books, building up your confidence, and also building up your self-esteem. Also, by the way, your self-esteem is all predicated by you. It's called self-esteem for a reason. Self-esteem doesn't come from the people around you and your environment. Don't expect people to agree with you. Don't expect people to give you a high five. You need to do the work. Even when nobody is watching, you need to continue to believe. You need to continue to do every single day, even if your environment shows no evidence of your vision. The other thing is extremely important. You got to master your emotions. Again, if you are swayed by somebody who tells you no, that you're not going to do it, and you say, you know what, that person is right. You're already going down the slippery slope. So learn how to manage your emotions effectively. This plays in, in a significant role in your actions and decisions because whatever you believe, whatever you feel, you're gonna do. So again, you gotta spend some time with yourself. Have a morning routine. Spend some time with yourself. Process your thoughts, process your emotions. You deserve a morning routine. I don't think you have to do a morning routine, but you deserve it. Now, you also got to take massive action, massive actions. You can't just do actions just like you typically have been doing it. You got to remember that you are beginning a new version of yourself. So when you're starting over again as a quote unquote newbie, even if you've been crushing it 5, 10, 15 years, if you're designing a new version of yourself, you're going to have to start off as a beginner. There's going to be things that you're going to need to learn and develop. So you need to have that kind of attitude and take massive action. Another big hack and elevator for success is model success, right? Find people that are already doing what you're doing and model them. Match their energy, match their enthusiasm, match their excitement, match the actions, match the habits, right? Take all of the things that you see them do and do that with your life. When I came over to EXP, I found the biggest leader that I could find, and that was Brent Gove, and he is extraordinary. I'm still following this guy because he had the energy, the conviction, the enthusiasm. So I said, you know what? I need to become Brent now. I need to match that guy's energy now. Not later, but now. So model success. Develop powerful habits. Cultivate powerful habits that align, your, align you with your goals. Small, consistent actions lead to significant change over time. It's those little micro things, that one conversation, that one follow-up, that one event, that one hour, that one book, that one conversation, everything you're doing stacked over time creates a massive change over time. So you're not going to see a massive change immediately, but you will see it over time. Also use the power of physiology. If you are stepping into a meeting, if you're stepping into a conversation and you're slouched over and you are telling yourself mentally, I don't believe in me, and your body says you don't believe in you, then guess what? Your goals are not going to manifest. So a big hack is to make sure that you're standing up straight. You breathe deep. You walk in with confidence and you radiate that conviction because people will be magnetized to you and your vision. They're going to say, you know what? This person's serious. This person is unshakable. And I want to be, you know, I want to be in business with this person. And trust me, people are watching. People are watching every single thing you do. So Please continue to believe in yourself. Continue to believe in your vision. Do not stop until you're living that reality. Also, I talked about this, but you got to create empowering rituals every single day. You got to do this every single day because if you don't, right, if you're now just going to watch television, you're eating unhealthy, you're not taking care of your body, you know, you're not studying, you're not learning, you're, you know, whatever your habits are, you got to replace them with great habits that are going to get you closer to the version that you created for yourself. And again, once you find the recipe, make sure you execute that every single day. This is a big one. Contribute and give back. True fulfillment comes from contributing to others. Tony Robbins suggests that giving back to your community and making a positive impact can enrich your life and amplify your sense of purpose. 
The secret of living is giving. I really believe that. I live by that. If you are having a bad day and you don't want to get up out of bed and you don't believe that you can make it or whatever BS story you're telling yourself, if you are in a rut, in a funk, having a bad day or even a bad week or a bad month, I dare you to go and help somebody. I guarantee you that by helping somebody, your life will become better. And it doesn't need to be monetarily, by the way. Just be a great human being. It could be smiling at somebody. It could be allowing somebody to merge into your lane at the freeway. It could be holding the door open for somebody. It could be calling somebody and just saying, thank you for being in my life. Thank you. Acknowledge other people. Because when you give love and you 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 radiate that, that energy, guess what's going to come back to you? More positive things. So now I want to end with these two quotes, okay? The secret of success is learning how to use pain and pleasure instead of having pain and pleasure use you. If you do that, you're in control of your life. If you don't, life controls you. I understand this mechanism at a really high level. This is why I have an accountability community. I declare my goals. I put my ass on the line every single day. And this is why I do videos. This is why I do you know, events and I declare my goals because when I say to 500 people that Leo Robles is doing two videos every single day, guess what? I am doing two videos every single day because I understand my human nature. I don't want to look bad and I want to look good. That's where my ego wants to keep me. So therefore, I'm going to reinforce my dreams and my goals by utilizing the pain and pleasure mechanism towards my advantage. Another really powerful quote by Tony Robbins, the only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is by suffering. You have to suffer in order to grow. Some people get it, some don't. Again, when you're developing yourself, you're going to run up against situations where you're going to feel some pain, you're going to feel some frustration, you're going to feel some anger, you're going to you're going to probably feel lost a lot of the times, but I want you to continue to move forward. Life and if you live if you if you've committed yourself to living a life of growth, suffering is going to be part of the process. If you can continue to move forward in regards in, in, regardless of that, you will meet a greater success in the near future, but you got to have a great relationship. So I'm going to end with this. What are you going to create today? What are you going to create this week? Who are you going to become? What kind of habits are you going to put in place? And what reality are you living into? So that's what I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for listening to this market update. And I will see you next week.